Hi, welcome to stembuildersjm.com. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to our channel. And if you are returning, welcome back. Now, today I have a special treat for you. I will be looking at some very important topics in the human and social biology syllabus. And in addition to my review of these topics, I'll be looking at some paper one and paper two past paper questions. So you don't want to miss this. And this episode is the first in the series. So you have to look out for those other videos. All right, now let us begin. Now, my name is Kabel Hilton. I'm the CEO and founder of STEM Builders Learning Hub. And of course, I'm your science educator extraordinaire. Today, I'm going to be looking at the definition of an organism, the list of characteristics of living things. I will also be describing each characteristic. And of course, as mentioned before, we will be looking at those past paper questions and be sure to listen out also for me highlighting those misconceptions and mistakes to avoid. Please remember to like and subscribe to this channel. Smart people learn from everything and everyone. Average people from their experiences. Stupid people already have all the answers. So let us commit to learn today. As mentioned before, we are looking at the characteristics of living organisms. Now, what is an organism, you may ask? So an organism is actually a living thing, something that has cells and that is able to carry out all the seven characteristics of life, right? And this is actually what you can use to test to determine whether something is living or non-living. So these characteristics are, you know, the benchmark to determine whether something is living or non-living. Now, what are these characteristics? So there are seven of them, and it's important when you're studying to keep a number in mind. So you know if you miss one out, right? Or if you're missing one. So first one is movement, respiration, growth, reproduction, irritability, nutrition, and excretion. And I have them in this particular order because they spell Mr. Grime. So that's M for movement, R for respiration, G for growth, R for reproduction, I for irritability, N for nutrition, and E for excretion, Mr. Grime. Now let us look at each, right? So starting with movement. Now living things, living things can move without help from anyone else or anything else. So without outside help, they can move on their own, right? However, non-living things move under external forces. So the wind have to move it or someone else have to move it. So if I want to move my plate, my plate can't move on its own. I have to move it because it's a non-living thing. All right, organisms like animals, however, can move part of their body, like what I'm doing now, or they can move their entire body. When they move their entire body from one place to another, that is called locomotion, right? And that includes walking, running, swimming, yeah, flying, <laughs> which some animals can do, right? Now, organisms like plants, can only actually move parts of their body. Example, opening and closing of flower petals. Um, they can also move or grow in the direction of the sun. So plants in fact can show growth movement or part movement. Respiration. Now respiration is how all organisms obtain their energy right? So all organisms need energy because cells need energy to do work. So cells can't work or do anything without energy. So all organisms need energy. And respiration is the process by which they get this energy because respiration is able to break down the food, mainly glucose, to make ATP, which is the energy. Now aerobic respiration is just one type of respiration. So you have two, aerobic and anaerobic. 
Aerobic respiration uses oxygen to release energy from the food, while anaerobic respiration does not use oxygen to release energy from the food. And we will get into respiration in some more detail when we look at that topic. So look out for that video as well. Growth. Growth is an increase in number or size. Now, cells of an organism can become specialized and an organism can increase in its complexity. Now, if you remember, if we look at this duckling though, or this bird, yes, you can see the smaller one, it will grow into an adult, so it will increase in size. Same thing for humans. We were just that big zygote, you know, like, which is just like a single cell, right? After the fusion of the egg and the sperm, we're just that zygote, that cell. And look at us now. <laughs> so we, we increased in the cell number and we also increased in size. Bacteria also, we can have 10,000 on your hand right now. A few minutes later, you have a million. So they also increase in number, that's how they grow. So growth is an increase in size or number and or number. Reproduction. The production of new individuals of the same species. So production of offspring, and this can be done sexually, which involves two parents, or asexually, which involves one parent. Irritability. Now, this is the ability of living organisms to respond to internal and external changes in the environment. And these changes are actually referred to as a stimuli. Now, irritability should not be confused with being irritated, which is to be annoyed, right? Irritability is this ability for us to be able to respond. So we hear a noise, we jump. Somebody pinch us, we respond. We're hungry, we respond. So we're able to respond to internal and external changes in our environment, and this is described as irritability. Nutrition. Now, food is needed to meet the energy because we can't respire without the food. The food has to be there for us to be able to break it down and meet the energy. So food is needed for energy and for making new cells. Plants are able to meet their own energy by the process of photosynthesis. While animals and fungi and most bacteria actually obtain this nutrients or this food from eating other organisms. So whether they eat plants or they eat um, animals that have eaten plants. Excretion. Yes, this is the final one for Mr. Brian. No, excretion is a removal of metabolic waste from the body. And metabolic means waste that was made by chemical means, right? So this is not to be confused with ejection, which is the removal of undigested food in the form of feces, right? So that's not the same thing as excretion. Excretion was waste that was made metabolic metabolically. So for example, um, respiration is a metabolic um, chemical reaction taking place in the body and it will produce carbon dioxide and water. Um, carbon dioxide, you breathe that out, the water, you can sweat it out. So those are all metabolic waste and therefore excretions, right? Now, if you look at this bird, it's actually excreting right now and not ingesting because what it is producing is uric acid, which is a very concentrated form of urine. So the urea is excreted as uric acid and it is that little white thing that comes out when the bird um, flies about, and sometimes it comes out with feces as well, but the white portion of it is a uric acid. Now, to the fun part, some past paper questions. So list three characteristics of living organisms other than respiration and feeding. Pretty easy, right? Because all you have to do is remember Mr. Grind. But important that you read the question, because it says other than respiration and feeding. So ensure that you only include the other four, which would be movement, reproduction, irritability, and excretion. Who that tells this teacher that a car is more alive than a plant because it takes in oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide and also because it moves. Hmm, so who does have a point? 
All right, so the question is, explain why respiration feeding are characteristics that cannot be applied to a car. Hmm. Okay, let's look at some sample responses. Now, a good response or an appropriate response would be, plants use glucose for respiration, whereas the cars use gasoline for energy. So you have to go and top up that car while the plant can actually make its own food. So um, respiration occurs in cells in plants, whereas cars do not have cells. Very good way to respond as well. Respiration in plants also requires enzymes. Pla um, cars would not have that. So plants, respiration in plants would require enzymes. Cars don't have enzymes, right? Regarding the feeding aspect, um, plants make their own food, whereas cars need to be given fuel. They don't have the fuel, the car can't move. Plants use glucose also to make other molecules. So they can use glucose to make proteins, um, fats, vitamins, etc. Cars also don't make anything. You better buy everything and put on that car. <laughs> So they're quite different from plants. And you can clearly see from these responses that a car, even though it's able to move, um, it cannot move on its own. So that's also another way that you can refer, um, think about it. That, you know, it's quite different from a plant and it's definitely not a living thing because it cannot carry out all seven characteristics of a living thing. Children in a preschool breathe deeply while running around in a park. They laugh a lot even when they're hurt and they want to mommy for a snack. Name three characteristics of living organisms that these children illustrate while playing in a park. So I have them there. So they're running, so that's movement. Um, it talks about them being hurt and they're laughing. So they're obviously responding to a change in their environment. And of course, they go for that snack. So that's nutrition. Now, I'm breathing, remember, is not a characteristic of living things because not all things breathe. So what all living things do is respire. Bernadette tells Georgiana that a flame is a living organism because it moves, grows, and reproduces by sparks. Is Bernadette correct? and you are to explain your answer. Now, the correct response is, flames do not exhibit all the characteristics of living things. Neither do they possess cells. So remember we said for something to be an organism, it must have cells. And so this is a very good response and a response that you can use to answer similar question that ask you to compare whether something is living or non-living. We can clearly state that, you know, the thing that is living would possess cells and that it would exhibit all characteristics of living things. Now let's look at some paper one questions. And I'm actually just gonna take the most famous or the two, <laughs> the two most common um, paper one questions on characteristics of living things. And the first one is this one, the ability of a living organism to detect and respond to changes in its environment is referred to as, da -da -da -da. so that would be irritability, being able to detect and respond to changes in the environment. All right, so that is irritability. And I've seen this question quite a lot, almost on all the paper one um, papers. So even the 2020, you have similar questions to this and the next one. So be, make sure you know the response to this one. Another popular question is this one. The process by which living organisms get energy from their food is called tantadana. What is this? And that would be, is it nutrition? Is it, yeah, so it's respiration. So a lot of students will actually choose nutrition because it talks about food. But you have to remember it says get the energy. So we're talking about the energy now. And so energy is, of course, respiration. So that's how you get energy, that's how you make energy from your food, right? And that's what the question is asking. So the answer is definitely respiration. I wanna thank you for watching. Thank you 
of course, um, for tuning in. Also, please remember, if you have any questions or you need clarification on something, feel free to leave a comment. And if you want me to discuss something else in the next, next video, also please feel free to leave a comment. And of course, remember to like and subscribe. And if you want a private tutoring session with me, feel free to give me a call. Um, my number will be there in the description, as well as you can check out our website at www.stembuildersjm.com.